Yo, you guys saw the thumbnail. The worst character in SF2 is the topic of the video. Is it Ganondorf? Probably not. Maybe. I mean, that's the focus of the video, right? So, I did this community poll at the start of the year asking people the simple question. Who is the worst character in SF2? Because, let's face it, even though the balancing, I would say, is pretty good compared to some of the official Smash games, there's got to be a weakest character. Every game has their Melee Kirby or Brawl Ganondorf, and SF2 is no exception, which is, you know, perfectly fine. So I'm going to go over the five characters who got the most votes out of these 160 submissions for the weakest character in SF2. Although I do want to warn, even the worst characters in Super Smash Flash can still seriously destroy players. There really is no Melee Kirby who's just like that bad. I would say maybe like a Melee Game & Watch level where like you can still body people even though you know have some clear weaknesses. So yeah, at the end, after talking about all five characters, I'll tell you who I think is personally the worst. I'd love to hear who you guys think is the worst in the comments below, but let's talk about it. Who was voted as the worst characters? Starting with the fifth worst voted character, Ganondorf with roughly only 6% of the votes. Ganondorf is kind of like an oddball character, as the most recently added, it kind of makes sense that, you know, we have less knowledge on how good he really is, but it's surprising so many people think he's bad. Like, on paper, Ganondorf shouldn't be that bad. He has early KO moves, pretty good combo game, great edge guards, and the massive, obviously, sword smash attack. You know, smash ultimate vibes up in here. But let's just say in practice, he's, uh, not quite as good. It took people a couple weeks to realize he's just incredibly slow. Seriously. I mean, being fast is a huge part of platform fighters. Most of the top tiers in most of the Smash games, I mean, almost all the Smash games are fast characters. And Ganondorf is super slow. Like, to approach people with Ganondorf is very hard, which makes it, you know, kind of hard to start your combos when you can't really approach. He's also very big and easy to combo. And let's do the math here. Easy to combo, very big. Oh, in SF2 engine, every character can pretty much zero to death him. Like, it's actually just a free combo when you fight against Ganondorf. It's definitely not looking good for Ganon, uh, combined with a relatively easy to edge guard recovery, especially for characters like Sheik or Meta Knight who can just go out there and hit him a bunch of times and kill him. But yeah, he's just not a great character. That being said, he has some strengths. Again, like I mentioned, he's very strong, like literally just like strong smash attacks and strong aerials. But you know, definitely not a great character. Although I would say it's hard to call him the worst, but we'll talk about the other characters first. Moving on from Ganondorf is the fourth most voted character, which is Jigglypuff with roughly 10% of the votes. This is a pretty shocking one, I would say. Personally, I was considered Jigglypuff not like an amazing character, but definitely not the worst. Similarly to Ganondorf, like you can do some cool stuff with Jigglypuff, and she has some strengths, like she got combos and edge guards and a lot of the cast, but those bad matchups she has against some of the top tiers like Meta Knight are very, very bad. Like she just gets outranged by a lot of characters, what is she going to do against projectiles, you know, and like how does she edgeguard some of these characters, it's just so hard. That being said, Jigglypuff does have actually some decent top players. I would not call her the worst, I'll just go ahead and I guess a little bit of spoilers. I'm not considering Jigglypuff the worst, but I'm not going to disagree that she's a little bit weaker than some other characters, so... I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense she was got 10% of the votes. Moving on from her is the third most voted character, which is another surprise if you haven't been playing recently, but if you've been in the SF2 community the past year, it's not too shocking, and it is Tails with 13% of the vote. Tails has certainly fallen from grace. <laughs> Once considered the best character, even having people saying he should be banned, mostly as a joke, but there were some serious people. Now I'll say it, I've always considered Tails a little bit weaker than people have said, a little overrated even, uh, but as he stands in the meta, he's not great. He's not terrible, again. Every character on this list has strengths I'll talk about. Tails, obviously, is his speed, very fast character, even has some cool advanced tech, making him even faster. And combo game. Tails has great combos, as many characters in SF2 do. That being said, Tails also has weaknesses. His recovery is super bad. Really, uh, it's one of the worst in the game. Combine this with some pretty small hitboxes on a lot of his stronger moves, it can be kind of tough to get kills with Tails. Although I do want to warn, Tails is easily my least knowledgeable character on this list, so I could be a little bit incorrect on that. I would actually love to hear what you guys think. Are there any Tails mains in the, you know, in the comments telling me why Tails is good or why he's bad? I'd love to hear. But yeah, 13% of people think he is pretty bad and even the worst. Moving on is the second most voted character for weakest in the game, and that is uh, not too shocking. It is Sandbag with 17% of votes. I mean, let's face it. Sandbag is the meme character, right? Like, he's he's pretty gimmicky intentionally, like, it's part of his design, and I actually like Sandbag's design. 
but it is very gimmicky, you know? Like, look at the, the, the uppy. It, it's still a bomb. But uh, the character's not completely unviable, but he struggles. He struggles a lot. Like, he literally cannot grab ledges. It's just not in his moveset. His movement is hard to control and weird. He gets stuck in shields super easily by a lot of pressure. And although he does have some sick movement tech and other tech that these sandbag players have been grinding, I've been seeing these insane clips on, like, you know, Twitter and whatnot. Overall, the character just still isn't great, even with the cool tech. I will say, at lower levels, there's some cool cheese you can do with Sandbag with like a side B and maybe some like, you know, up B cheese. But like, once you get to like the top level, Sandbag is so hard to win with. Like, I feel bad for Sandbag player. That is a struggle. The one good thing going for Sandbag really is his throws, I would say. The back throw and forward throw kills are great. And of course, he has the infamous down throw combos. Seriously, I love the down throw up B. It kills ridiculously early. Um, but overall, I can totally see why he's placed here. So yeah, Sandbag, not great even though, you know, there are a few sandbag believers out there. And lastly, and this one got so many votes, it was shocking that it got this much percentage of votes, is Goku, with 25% of the votes. So one in four people who took this uh, poll voted Goku as the weakest character. Now again, being voted the weakest character does not necessarily mean you are the weakest character, it just means the most people think you are. And yeah, I guess maybe the community has just been putting out enough anti-Goku propaganda People don't think Goku is good, and it's hard to disagree with them. You know, I'm a Goku supporter, I will say, I've always, you know, I've played Goku for a bit, I think he has some strengths, but even me, as a Goku supporter, I can see why people voted him as one of the weaker characters, seriously. A lot of the other characters that used to be low tier have been buffed and have gone up in the tier list, you know, like Naruto, for example, or Black Mage, and even Game & Watch a bit, but then you got characters like Goku, who just don't really get buffs. Or when they do, it's like very minor buffs. And now people think he's the weakest character. And yeah, he's not great. <laughs> Out of these five characters that are considered the weakest, I will easily say it's not Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff, not the greatest character. Could use some buffs for sure. You know, heck, buff Jigglypuff, go for it. Gandorf needs some buffs, but I don't think he's the weakest character. Maybe some speed buffs or just something to make Gandorf a little bit, you know, make it so he can approach, really. <laughs> and then Sandbag and Goku, I would say, are a tier lower than Tails. Tails, again, not a great character, but also part of it's just that no one really plays Tails, I think, so we don't really know how good Tails truly can be. Whereas Sandbag and Goku, people play the characters, and we can tell they're not great, because there are some great players who play Sandbag and Goku, and they're struggling, I'll tell you what. Like, I don't know, it's, it's hard to say. I, I guess I would personally say, I'm just gonna go with it, I think Sandbag's the weakest character. It kind of makes sense, he's literally a Sandbag for the rest of the characters to just combo to Oblivion. Uh, and yeah, I mean, does he need buffs? Kind of, I guess. It's kind of his gimmick that he's he is the way he is, so I don't think you need to buff Sandbag. I think it's a fitting place for him to be. If, if someone had to be the weakest, I mean, heck, the, the joke character kind of fits, you know? And yeah, I think that's about it for the video. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Who was the weakest in your opinion? I know some people I was talking to said maybe they think Kirby's the weakest, and I didn't even put him on the video because he wasn't voted. But I don't know. Who do you think's the weakest? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.